Uh, guys? Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 44th episode of the show Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 249th episode overall titled Chasing the Space Part 1. We begin this episode outside of Justin's house, which I don't think we've ever seen before. He's walking with his dad who is talking about how he has a huge meeting with the president of the company. He's getting a new job, I guess. I don't know. This guy must be so fireable. Justin brings him his briefcase and he tells his dad to relax. Justin says goodbye. So who's paying for this house? On the moon, Divatox arrives in her wagon looking at a giant monster, Gold Goyle. Porto introduces him and Divatox tells him to go and destroy the Power Rangers once and for all. At the youth center, everyone's watching a space shuttle land on TV and everyone watches Justin getting real into it. We then see an interview with the commander of Nasada. Get it? Then Justin's dad shows up and he walks over. Justin asks how the interview went and his dad says he got the job. They hug. His dad then says that he wants to talk to Justin about something and they walk away. At another table, his dad tells him that if he takes the new job, he'll have to leave Angel Grove. He said he won't leave unless Justin comes with him. Justin vents about how much he loves Angel Grove and how all his friends are here. But for some reason, he doesn't list Carlos as a friend. Instead, he just says that Carlos is going to put him on the soccer team. Dude, Carlos has been your butt buddy since like day one. Don't play him like that. He'll even miss Bulk and Skull, who are in old stock footage hitting each other with whipped cream. Justin's dad says that they'll stay then, but then Justin's communicator goes off and Justin says that they can talk about it more later. He starts to leave with the others, but Carlos asks what's going on and Justin explains that he might have to move. At the power chamber, Demetria explains to the rangers that they have an urgent message from Eltar, which Justin claims is the source of all their powers. Zordon's on the screen flickering in and out and he says that Eltar is under attack, but they need to stay and defend the earth. Zordon says to beware of something, but then he disappears. TJ asks, beware of what? Dude, that's the thing we're all doing. Gold Goyle is getting ready to head to Earth and Divtok squeals in delight as he leaves. Back at the power chamber, the alarms go off and Alpha says that something is entering the Earth's atmosphere and Alpha says whatever it is, it's massive. Bigger than a Megazord. Shift in the turbo. The rangers flip into the forest running, but then they see nothing. Then, through lightning, Gold Goyle shows up, mocking the Power Rangers. They talk back and forth for a bit before Gold Goyle spits a giant explosion at them, knocking them down. The rangers call out their rescue zords, forming the rescue Megazord. They jump up, avoiding an explosion from Gold Goyle, firing at him, but then he uses tentacles to break their guns. They then go straight into artillery power, and they fire, but Gold Goyle sends it back at them, knocking them around pretty brutally, hitting them completely down. There's also a bunch of bad shots here of them still holding artillery power when they weren't. They then stand up, but it means nothing because they're getting their asses handed to them. Justin reroutes the auxiliary power to get them back online, but it's not enough. They try to divert power from the weapons, but they can't do anything. Cassie is going to go reconnect manually, and TJ says they can't do it. They need to stop him right here and right now. His plan is a freaking suicide mission. Move in closely and self-destruct. Cassie says, it's brilliant because he'll never expect it. The Megazord slowly saunters over and TJ says to jump ship on his command. They then just bear hug Gold Goyle, and TJ calls for the Turbo Zords. Then the rescue Megazord just explodes, and the Rangers fly out getting into their Turbo Zords. It didn't even work. He's fine. You guys just sacrificed those gifts from the Phantom Ranger for nothing. They form the Turbo Megazord and they do their spin on attack and they fly up, missing an attack from Gold Goyle, and then they really go for it, hitting Gold Goyle with all they've got and nothing. Then he gathers energy around him, focusing it on the Megazord, hitting them down. Everything is exploding and smoking. Things are not looking great for the Power Rangers. The Rangers lament how they're probably gonna die, and then TJ says he has an idea, so they bail out of the Megazord. He calls for the Turbo Ram Cannon, and then he tells Justin to set it to detonate on impact. TJ, stop blowing shit up. TJ says he needs to get close for this to work, and Justin has it all ready to go. TJ calls a lightning cruiser and he flies toward Gold Goyle, firing the turbo ram cannon out into his mouth, exploding in his mouth, and that somehow blows up Gold Goyle. What? TJ lands getting out of his car, celebrating with the others. Carlos points out that they lost both Megazords though. Yeah, I feel like that was a pretty big oversight. They teleport out for the power chamber. As they whiz by, Rygog and Elgar are walking with Perontrons and they realize that they can follow them to wherever it is that they're going. They then climb the rocks to find the power chamber on the hill. Wait, they've never known where this was the whole time? Meanwhile, on the space base, there's a party and Divtox is celebrating because the Megazords are gone. And she says, today, the Megazords and tomorrow. And Rygog says, the Power Rangers chamber. They then tell her that they found the power chamber and the Rangers are inside. Divtox is excited. She commands the armies to be ready. At the power chamber, the rangers tell Demetria about the Megazord, and Demetria says that Elgar has fallen to evil forces. They want to go help Zordon, but Demetria says no. She and the Blue Centurion will go to Eltar to help Zordon. They will leave immediately. The rangers seem apprehensive about this. Outside, Ferrantrons with flags show up. Like, a shit ton of them. They're going around on their bikes, scouting out an area for way longer than necessary. Demetria says that the rangers shouldn't worry. They'll be as safe as they can be. Justin then gives Blue Centurion a hug, and he ends up giving him his lucky coin. 
TJ says they'll protect the Earth in her absence. Divatox is now with her army outside, walking with Rygog and Elgar. This is kind of surreal, watching her getting really ready to take over everything. Viva la diva. Dimitri then gives a really bad speech about how the Power Rangers are awesome, and she teleports out with the Blue Centurion. The troops are ready outside and Divatox sits in her snake throne, but then she sees that Demetria and the Blue Centurion have left Earth. She says they attack now. The Perontrons mobilize, taking off on their bikes with weapons and flags. Alpha sees what's going on outside, showing the army heading their way on the viewing globe. They're climbing the rocks up to the power chamber now, getting closer and closer. The Rangers aren't sure what to do, and TJ says they have to go out and face them. And Alpha says there's way too many. TJ says they can't just wait to get attacked. Alpha says to be careful out there, and he opens the outer doors. The Rangers rush out, running toward their biggest battle yet. To be continued. Damn, this is a good episode, though I have to say that the Gold Goyle fight has a terrible ending to it. But other than that, everything's pretty great. Can we talk about Justin's dad, though? Like, this guy has to be low-key a meth addict, right? I mean, he's constantly looking for work and struggling, but he somehow has, like, a nice house. I thought he had a job, and that's why he was back in Angel Grove to begin with, but now we find out that maybe not. And then he gets a job, and then he has to move, but then he won't leave without Justin. I mean, duh, Justin's your son. Who the hell has he been living with when his dad wasn't around to begin with? We found out way back in the Turbo movie that Justin lost his mom somehow, so seriously, who is watching Justin? Okay, rant over. Next time, we get to a place I don't think I've ever thought we'd get to on this channel. The final episode of Power Rangers Turbo. How will this mixed bag of a season end? Find out next time, but until then, may the power protect you.